Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, and over the next few weeks, we are going to be presenting to you one of the greatest programs I believe that we've done this far. And that's what I'm going to be showing you, how to break curses off your life. Or let me say it like this, what causes a curse to happen? This program is going to go over the next few weeks dealing with this issue. And I encourage you right now to just mark your calendar to make sure that you see all of it in its entirety. But we're going to be looking, starting out in in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2, that says, A curse causeless cannot remain. Friends, I'm going to tell you that if there's a curse operating in a person's life, there is a cause, there's a reason that's allowing it to remain. But God is wanting to show us through the Word of God how that we can begin to break that cause off of our life, break that curse off of our life where we don't have to live cursed. We're going to live blessed in Jesus' name. That's why we're bringing it to you here on Kingdom Now. And I just want to thank you for watching. Right now, we're going to go into the message. Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael. and We are here in the sanctuary of Evangel North Church. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to be bringing you a message entitled The Twelve causes of curse in our life. And I want to jump right on into it. So turn in your Bibles, the book of Proverbs, chapter 26 and verse 2. Now to get the most out of today's message, you're going to have to watch the next few weeks of this program because it's going to be very informational. I believe it's going to touch your life. And as we go through this, it's going to be a time for you to seek the Lord and ask God how you and I can begin to walk freer than we've ever been. The book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 2, it says these words. It says, like a fleeting sparrow, like a flying swallow, a curse without a cause shall not alight. One version says, a curse causeless shall not remain. That's informational for you and I because we see then that if a curse is operating in our lives, then there's a reason, there's a cause for the curse. Someone says, well, in Jesus, aren't we all free of curses? Didn't Jesus come to deliver us from a curse? Well, certainly he did. But see, the thing that most people miss is while freedom is available and redemption is available to everybody, it must be appropriated. And I want to say that again. Freedom is available, but it must be appropriated. It's not unlike salvation. When you and I were away from God, salvation was right there available to us the entire time. But it doesn't benefit us. It doesn't come into our lives until we do what? We appropriate it. We believe in our heart. We begin to confess with our mouth. We begin to allow God to change us and turn some things around. So while that salvation is free and available for every single person, It doesn't come into my life where it doesn't produce any result until I bring it in, until I appropriate it into our lives. Well, the same is true for all curses. When a curse is operating in a person's life, freedom is available. And over the next few weeks as we go over this 12 causes of curses here on Kingdom Now, what I want you to realize is that these curses, you are free to be delivered to be completely walking in a newness of life over every one of these curses. It is available to you and can be broken in the name of Jesus. If we apply, if we begin to apply the uh, blood of Jesus to our lives, begin to release our faith for what God wants to give us today. So as we talk about the 12 causes of curses I want us to take a little look in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 26 because Deuter or 28 rather Deuteronomy 28 gives us what is the blessing and what is the curse. Now I want you to note when you look in your Deuteronomy 28 that in verses 1 through 14 tells us what the blessing looks like. 14 verses. 
that describes the blessing. Now, of course, this isn't all of it. It isn't all inclusive, but it gives us a really good description of the blessing. But verses 15 through 68, 15 through 68 gives us a description of what a curse looks like. Now, that's many more verses about the curse and the blessing. And I think it was by God's mercy so that you and I could be able to really identify what does it look like? What does it look like when a curse is operating my life? How do I know that there's a problem, that things are happening in my life that God didn't want to happen? You see, when many of the body of Christ are confused, we, we, we look at certain things and we're not sure whether it's a blessing or or a curse. One preacher I heard uh, after his uh, tent got torn down by a storm and he didn't have insurance on it and it was a gospel tent in which he had been used to use uh, to win many people to the Lord. He got up and he said, I don't know if it was God that tore it down or it was the devil. I thought, well, how in the world if this preacher of the gospel doesn't know whether God's tearing down tents or whether the devil's tearing down tents, how many realize that's a problem? Well, I've heard people say things very similarly when they talk about a sickness coming in their life. Well, that's just God put this on me because he wants to get glory out of this. Or, or, or God's teaching me something through this sickness. This sickness is a blessing. Or somehow they think that poverty is, is, is somehow more holy than, than being blessed and walking in prosperity. No, the Bible gives us a description of what a curse looks like when it's operating in a person's life. There in Deuteronomy 20, 28, when it begins to describe what a curse looks like, it describes things like, well, when you're, you're not doing well financially. When you're working and you're toiling and you're doing all that you know to do, but all of a sudden it just seems like you're not getting ahead financially. That's not a blessing, friend. That's a curse. Sickness coming upon someone in the book of Deuteronomy 28 verses 61 and 62. The Bible begins to say all these sicknesses and diseases that came on the Egyptians. He said when the curse is operating, when the curse is working in your life, all those diseases that went on the Egyptians began to come on you. And then it said in anything that's not specifically listed, including every sickness and every plague is included as part of the curse. So what do I know then? I know that every sickness based on Deuteronomy 28, 61 and 62, that every sickness and every plague is part of the curse. So when I see sickness, when I see plagues, I know that's not the blessing. That's a curse operating in a person's life. The Bible talks about in part of the curse that when a person gets up in the middle of the day and they wish it was night, they go to bed at night and they wish it was day. What are they doing? They're wishing their life away. They're, they're not happy with their life. There's no fulfillment. There's no purpose going on in their lives. Talks about a wife being young and tender and she's a good person, but all of a sudden she don't want to be around her children. She doesn't want to be around her husband. All of a sudden her family starts breaking apart or, or that man, it says he's a young man, he's a strong man, a good man, but all of a sudden something starts rising in him. He doesn't want to be with his wife anymore. He doesn't want to be with his children. That broken family is an indication that the curse is operating in a person's life. A person who lives every day unfulfilled. These are just descriptions of what a curse looks like when it's working in a person's life. Now, why should we pay attention to the curse? Why do you think God spent so much time in that? Because the curse, if we were to identify something as a curse... Then that lets us know, wait a minute, I shouldn't accept that. I shouldn't accept poverty. I shouldn't accept defeat. I shouldn't accept a broken marriage and a broken family. I shouldn't accept a life of depression and a life that's purposeless. I shouldn't accept that. Why? Because that's a cursed life. I know what a cursed life looks like and that's what it looks like and I don't want it anymore. So the day when we begin to look at our lives and we begin to 
put our lives up against the mirror of the Word of God and say, is the curse operating in my life or is the blessing operating in my life? And if we can identify the curse, if we can say, wait a minute, you know, I am sick, I am broke, I'm depressed, I am purposeless, nothing's working right for me, I get defeated at every turn, bad things just happen to me all the time. When we begin to identify that there's a curse going on, the Bible says, back to our scripture in Proverbs 26, that a curse causeless cannot remain. So then if a curse is happening in my life, there is a reason or a cause that is allowing it to happen. So then I have to look at my life and say, okay, what is going on that allows this curse to happen? What are the open doors? We might use that term for a moment. What are the open doors? What are the causes that are allowing this curse to be able to come and remain in my life? Now, let me help you with that a little bit before we continue. You see, the curse will always try to come. Why? Well, when Adam and Eve sinned all the way back there in the Garden of Eden, when they failed God, they released by their failure the curse to operate in this world. The curse is here. And the only reason anybody doesn't operate under the curse is because of the protective, merciful, and gracious hand of God. And all that needs to happen for a curse to happen in, in a person's life is for them to remove themselves from God's hand or for God to remove His hand off of them. It would be like a, a, a house in the middle of the night and there's darkness when the night is here. And when you turn the lights off, you didn't do anything to turn the darkness on. The darkness, it was just there. The darkness just came. The only thing that it takes for darkness to come is for you to turn the light off. The same is true when it comes to a curse. The only thing that needs to happen is for you and I to come out from underneath what God said, for you and I to come out from underneath what God wants to do in our life, and then the curse just happens. It's not really an activity of God, but rather it's an inactivity. All God has to do is remove Himself, or here's what happens many times, is we remove ourselves. We will have an area in our life that comes out from underneath what God wants us to do, where we're not doing what He wants us to do, we're not being what He wants us to be. And so what have we done? We've now removed ourselves from His hand and it becomes an open door for the curse to come in our lives. So today and over the next few weeks as we talk about these curses, these are open doors. These are causes that allow a curse to remain in our lives. So I want to go ahead and jump on into several of these causes that will, that will allow a curse to happen. And now I'm going to give you 12 of them, but in reality, it's basically anything that you do that God tells you not to do or anything that you're not doing that God tells you to do. That's going to be its simplest form. That's going to be its most basic form is that if God has spoken you to do something and you're not doing it, you've got an open door for a curse to operate in your life. If, if God tells you to stop doing something and you continue to do it, that's an open door for a curse to come in your life. Now I'm going to identify 12 major causes of a curse. But as we're talking over these next few weeks, ask the Holy Spirit to show you where is the open door. What is the cause that's allowing this curse to be able to come and land in my life and remain? Brother Kenneth Hagin says, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, 
But you don't have to let them make a nest on your head. You don't have to let them stay. A curse is going to try to come. It's going to try to alight. It's going to try to come in your life. But friends, you and I don't have to let that thing remain in our lives. There's things that we can do to begin to shoo that thing off and say, No, you don't have a right to be in my life because I'm in obedience to the Word of God. So if you're taking notes, I want you to jot down number one and... I may give you the numbers. Some of them I just may just go through it, but I will identify several. The first cause of a curse that we want to deal with today is the curse of idolatry. And since we're already here in Deuteronomy 28, I want you to turn over a page or two into Deuteronomy 27 that says in verse 15 that cursed, listen to how that says this, cursed is the one who makes a carved... We're going to pause this message for just a moment because I want to encourage you to download our app. Evangel North Church has an app for Android as well as for Apple. If you got iPhones, iPads, any tablet, you can download. Just go to the market there, type in Evangel North Church, and you'll see the app. And that will enable you to watch Kingdom Now anytime, 24-7. In fact, you'll have access to all of the programs that we've ever done and all the future ones that we're going to do. And so I encourage you to get that app. Of course, you can watch it at 21.com, WBNA21.com, and encourage you to go to click on the light and then scroll down to the ministries at the bottom of the page. You'll find Evangel North Church. You can watch it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere around the world. Of course, you can watch it on this program here at 21.3, WBNA 21.3. Right, now we're going to get right back into the message. Thank you for watching Kingdom Now. God wants us to do where we're not doing what He wants us to do, we're not being what He wants us to be. And so what have we done? We've now removed ourselves from His hand and it becomes an open door for the curse to come in our lives. So today and over the next few weeks as we talk about these curses, these are open doors. These are causes that allow a curse to remain in our lives. So I want to go ahead and jump on into several of these causes that will, that will allow a curse to happen. And now I'm going to give you 12 of them, but in reality, it's basically anything that you do that God tells you not to do or anything that you're not doing that God tells you to do. That's going to be its simplest form. That's going to be its most basic form is that if God has spoken you to do something and you're not doing it, you've got an open door for a curse to operate in your life. If, if God tells you to stop doing something and you continue to do it, that's an open door for a curse to come in your life. Now, I'm going to identify 12 major causes of a curse but as we're talking over these next few weeks, ask the Holy Spirit to show you where is the open door. What is the cause that's allowing this curse to be able to come and land in my life and remain? Brother Kenneth Hagin says, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you don't have to let them make a nest on your head. You don't have to let them stay. A curse is going to try to come. It's going to try to alight. It's going to try to come in your life. But friends, you and I don't have to let that thing remain in our lives. There's things that we can do to begin to shoo that thing off and say, no, you don't have a right to be in my life because I'm in obedience to the Word of God. So if you're taking notes, I want you to jot down number one and 
I may give you the numbers. Some of them I just may just go through it, but I will identify several. The first cause of a curse that we want to deal with today is the curse of idolatry. And since we're already here in Deuteronomy 28, I want you to turn over a page or two into Deuteronomy 27 that says in verse 15 that cursed, listen to how that says this, cursed is the one who makes a carved or molded image. Now notice what this is. This is something that is man-made, a man-made activity, a man-made object, and it's an abomination to the Lord, the work of of the hands of the craftsmen and set it up in secret. What's he talking about? Idolatry. When they began to create and carve idols that were made with the hands of man and people would begin to take these objects and it could also be taken into an activity. Oftentimes idolatry has with it an activity. And so this, this object or this activity that was humanly created began to be set up and it look at what, how it describes it. It says, and sets it up in secret. Well, what does that mean? That means it was given a special place in their life. It was something of human origin, an object or activity that was set up in a secret place or given a special place in their life, often for worship, but really it was anything that kept them from doing what God had called them to do. Now, probably most of you watching today don't have idols in our life that we might think about. I often think about the 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 the, the fat, naked, half naked man sitting in a I think a lotus position we know as Buddha. And you'll see that I have been in homes where people have had those there. And, and sometimes people just have them as decoration, but they often, people will, walk, will fall down and worship them. And of course, you know, in India, there are thousands, I'm told tens of thousands of gods that they worship there. And there's different religions that do have different gods and, ido and, and, and idols that they bring in our lives. But do you know that even in America, while idolatry to that level or in that specific form, maybe not as prevalent here, let me tell you where it is prevalent. It is prevalent when we have an object or an activity such as chasing a little round white ball when we should be in church or taking care of our family or maybe uh, drowning some worms on a hook or maybe sitting in a deer stand for hours and hours and hours while neglecting our family in the house of God. And, we, and God's wanting us to do certain things and take care of our family and, and, and take care of our church life and pray and read the Bible. But it seems like we can't pray and we can't read our Bibles and we don't have time for church and, and, and we're not spending time with our families. But boy, we can sure carve out time to go chase a white ball. We can sure carve out time to go and sit in a deer stand in the middle of the cold for hours and hours and hours. Friends, those are idols. I'm not saying to you today that you can't ever go play a good game of golf or, or you can't ever watch football or go, go fishing, go hunting. But friends, when we set that up as a place when we're neglecting what God told us to do, when we're neglecting His call in our life to take care of our families and to take care of church, when those things become things that we enjoy to do more than we enjoy being in the presence of God, then who are we really worshiping? I find that people have no problem sitting down watching a two-hour movie but struggle and feel like they're doing God a favor by coming to a church service once or twice a week. Do you see the issue there? Do you see that if God is really the Lord, shouldn't we want to be in His presence more than anything else in our life?
Shouldn't we be more concerned about how much we can do for God and how much we can obey God? But yet, sadly, in most people's lives, they drag themselves to church halfway bored in the services, can't ever throughout the week crack their Bibles open and spend time in the Word of God, spend time worshiping God and praying and seeking God with all their heart. Can't do that. No, ain't got time for that. Oh, struggle to do that. Pray for me. I can't pray. I don't pray like I ought to. And yet, think nothing of spending a couple hours on their Facebook Think nothing about going to a football game, basketball game, whatever. They can do that in a heartbeat. But yet to pray, to read the Bible, to sit in the presence of God with God's people and to gather around. Not to mention taking care of your family, your spouse, your children. Spending time with them, seeing to it that, that they have your best effort. Friends, I'm going to tell you that most people have idols in their life. Think oh, I'm sure that message has been powerful revelation to you. And we want to thank you for watching Kingdom Now. But I want to take this opportunity to invite you to Evangel North Church. We're located in Clarksville, Indiana, 1732 Thames Drive. The address is at the bottom of your screen. Of course, you can visit us anytime at evangelnorth.net, online at evangelnorth.net. If you have an iPhone or any type of Apple product or an Android, you can go to the marketplace there and you can download our app, get all information about the church, about the ministries that we do here at the church. We want you to come and belong. In fact, the Lord spoke to us to have a slogan, if you will, that says, You belong because it is our heart to find help you to find a place that you can come and not just attend church but belong to a family and that's our goal and our vision here at Evangel North Church we have services Sundays 9 and 11 a.m. that's two services 9 a.m. 11 a.m. Wednesday night at 7 of course we have life groups that start at 6 o'clock we also have a dinner at 5 30 you and your family can come out and it can just be a wonderful time in the Lord you can visit us online again at evangelnorth.net and I want to encourage you to Invite your family and friends to watch Kingdom Now. As it's been a blessing to you, it would probably be a blessing to them. And we just encourage you to help us as the audience is growing. Help us grow the audience even further by sharing it with your family, your friends. Get on your Facebook. Get on your Twitter. Begin to let people know how they can view it. Of course, they can go online at WBNA21.com. WBNA21.com. Click on the light and then at the bottom of the page, they can scroll. They'll find Evangel North Church. This program can be viewed anywhere around the world. They can and view this program. And so if you would share that with us, that would be a great blessing to us. I want to say a word of prayer for you right now. Father, today, I thank you for my friends that are watching. God, I thank you that you are breaking the curse off of our lives. God, today, that we don't have to live cursed lives. No, we live blessed lives. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I just loose the blessing right now over my friends. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching Kingdom Now.